morning. Welcome to the Pool Ministry. It is our hope that we learn about Jesus in an, in an enjoyable and fun way. My name is Mr. Dan, and this is my assistant, Patches. Hi, everybody. And Patches is going to start the, the time off this morning. Um, I know if you look at this list here, let Patches do the talking. If you look at this list here, you will see this kind of a word, this spelled word here, velo, elo, voli, and ovla. Now, what we, this is not just a spelling error, but it's an example uh, that you look at these words and you will see that they all have very common letters. They all have a V, a E, L, and O. Now I'm going to give you a clue that this word up here we take from these letters are going to be what God shows to us and he also shows to your mom and dad. I'm going to give you a clue. The first letter this mystery word is L. Can anyone think of what the other words might be? Okay, I hear someone said, I think the last letter is E. Okay, we're gonna we'll try that. Okay. So we have two more letters left. And I hear uh, O. And the last letter, of course, is going to be V that's left. Now, what can you guys say that identify this word as? L O V E. Love. And that's what our lesson is going to be about today. Thank you, Patches, for that. Like Patches said, the lesson is going to be on love. And our hope is that we should be able to love one another just as God has done, given to us. But for another exercise that we're going to be doing is I'm going to be asking you a question to think, what is the opposite of love? I'm going to say love is such, and you tell me the opposite. Love is patient, but the opposite would be what? If I'm, if love is patient, the opposite would be, yes, impatient. Or uh, I can't wait around. So that would be an example of the opposite of patience. Okay, love, the Bible says love is kind. What's the opposite of be uh, kind? Unkind. Yes, rude. No proper manners. All these are good answers. Okay, love is not proud. What would be the opposite of not proud? The opposite would be proud, boastful, ooh, big word, arrogant. That means, oh, I'm so great. No, God does not want us to uh, take that position. Love is righteous. What is the opposite? I think all of us can relate to that. Sin, unrighteousness, unlawful. Love is tr truth. What is the opposite of truth? Uh, untruth? Yes. Lies, oh, or fault being false. As we honestly look at what love is, we might ask ourselves, how many of these unloving actions have we done? And I have to confess, I've done a lot of them, 
And if you look at your life as well, sorry to say you probably have done your fair share as well. But there's hope. Because when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior into our life and become a Christian, it changes us inside our heart. And we learn about love and what God wants us to do. Since we're going to be calling, using God's strength to develop this love, we're going to go to God and ask for his help now. And what we're going to do is like a few weeks ago, we're going to pray, follow the leader. Not play, but pray, follow the leader. I'm going to say, pray a few words, like two or three words. I'll pause and let you say them. Then I'll say another three words of the prayer, and then you repeat them. And we'll go on until we finish the prayer and say, Amen. If you're ready, we'll go ahead and the three things that we remember to do. Bow our heads, close our eyes, and hands together. Okay. With everyone ready for prayer, I'll go ahead and lead. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for loving us. Guide our time in the pool so that we learn to love you and the people we see each day. Help my mom and my dad learn to love you and I love them just as our Heavenly Father. Amen. Thank you very much for sharing in that prayer. A little history on love. Love describes many good actions and qualities that make it so desirable and what God wants us to learn. All these qualities make up the wonderful God that we serve. Even before creation, God was already loving us before we were even born. You can imagine that. He loved me, he loved Pastor Charles, he loved you kids even before you were born and even before your parents were born. God provided prophets, he provided the, uh, the Bible, so that we can have his word or communication on how we are to learn how to love. All this because God loves you and he wants you to live according to his loving plan on earth. Sometimes I know we uh, think we understand something, and I'm going to use an illustration here. I've got two mirrors. And what I'd like you to try to see is, if you can focus that, can you look into this uh, fire, uh, this mirror and see what that is saying? You probably can't because it's very difficult. This foil is not really a good mirror. But now we're going to, and that's kind of how we think, oh, I think I know everything about love. But then when we actually try it out, we realize this doesn't work. But if we get a real mirror and then we hold it up to the, me uh, the message on the paper, we hopefully will be able to see that. And if you can't see it, the word is love. L-O-V-E. Just like we had over there on the board. Okay? So this is how, um, after we learn a lot of God's word and put it into our life, we see, the un we understand love so much better, okay? But one of the first things that we uh, do after we accept Jesus and accept his love as we start to learn our Bible, 
so that when we study God's Word and He tells us what He wants us to do, we will be able to find the areas that we need to find out. So, I know Pastor Charles has reinforced this before, that as we take our Bible, just like this, you are holding this Bible here, and I'm going to show you, and I mark this to make it a little bit more graphic so that you might understand it. But as you can see, there's a first a red section, then a blue section, then a green section. So we, we divide the Bible into three sections. And the first two sections, I'm going to say the red and the blue one, are the Old Testament. It's a lot larger. And then the smaller section, the third section here, is the New Testament. And that's what we're going to be studying today. passage that we're going to be looking at is found in Corinthians. So we go past the first two sections of the Old Testament to turn to the last third section of the Bible. And the New Testament, you can recall and say it with me. First book is Matthew, yes, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinth, first and second Corinthians. And that's the book that we're going to be studying from today, is 1 Corinthians. We find this in chapter 13. We're going to key on the verses 4 through 6. If you would like to turn to that, that would be great. Um, you can stop the video and uh, then start it back up after you have your Bibles. But once again, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 6, and I'd like you to look at the very first word of verse 4. I'll go ahead and read it for the group. And what did you come up with the very first word? We've already used this first word already several times. Yes, love. It starts off with love. I'm going to read it. Love is patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and it is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice with unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. So the, the Bible is, is really important to us because that's how God communicates his love to us. We're going to turn. I've got another board here. We're going to move from that love board. And we're going to move to this. Here's a series of questions that I'd like you to kind of kind of look at. What qualities of love are true? Okay, love Love is the, the title word, but underneath love, love breaks down into, it, it includes patience, it includes kindness, it's not jealous, it's not envious, so many, but we'll take, we're going to take three, patience, kindness, and not jealous. Okay. I'd like to tell you, uh, I'd like you to tell me which action best describes love. Imagine yourself with either a classmate or your best friend. And this is the situation. We're think, concentrating on patience. First one is, I am willing to wait for the next batch of cookies from the oven. Do you think that's a good illustration or example of patience? Or do you think that's impatient? Yes. Do you think that it's a good illustration? Anyone else? I think it's pretty unanimous that we all agree that patience, this boy or this girl, is willing to wait for others to maybe have a cookie and they'll wait for the second batch. Okay, second item. I need food right now. I am hungry. Everyone behind me. 
Think about that one. Is that patience? I think I see some shaking of heads going in this direction, and I would agree with that. I want my food. I want my food now. You give me that. Everyone behind me. It's me first. No, you're correct on that, kids, is that uh, that is not a ex good example of patience. Okay, you, you guys are doing great. We're going to move on to kindness, that area of love. Since you do not have a lunch, okay, once again, there's you and your friend. Your friend doesn't have lunch. They forgot it or didn't lost it. Since you do not have a lunch, I have plenty. We can share mine. What do you think of that? You're hungry. Your friend doesn't have a lunch. And you get into that situation. But he, your friend, is uh, you're willing to share. And I think we're all unanimous, well, unanimous, or a majority on that, is that that's a great example of kindness. That you're willing to share something that you need food, your lunch, but then your friend doesn't have any at all. Okay, second item. I can help with the cleaning of your room, and then we can play later. Sometimes our parents say, hey, Billy, you need to stay in, in, uh, and home and clean your room, and then you could go out and play. If your friend is willing to help you clean your room, complete the obligation to your parents, and then you can have a few minutes to play. It may not be as long as before, but he's willing to help. What do you think of that? Is that a good act of kindness? Yes, that, that is. Okay, love, it's not jealous. Okay, that word is a pretty large word. It's wanting, it's wanting what someone else has. Like if another, someone else has a brand new bike, I was thinking, hey, I want that bike. I, I'm gonna, I need a new bike. No, we shouldn't be thinking that direction. So this is the uh, story. Billy has more toys than me. I'm going to take some and hide them in my room. Uh oh, what do you think of that? Yes, that's not a good example to follow. Um, that is not, that is, that is jealousy by taking, and that's got something that God does not want. Okay, the next question. I like to play soccer even though I am not the best player. I always try my best. How do you think that? I think all of you kids play sports, play basketball, soccer, baseball, hide and seek. You may not be the best player, but you always do your best. And that's what God wants of us. And so the answer to this question, you think? Yes, that's a great example of not being jealous. We don't want, you know, sure, they, they, some other, uh, other people may have nice things, but God has given us the needs that we need. Okay. I think no matter who we are, there's always going to be someone who is smarter, better looking, more athletic in sports, and someone there's always going to be someone less fortunate than, than us that may not have very much clothes or much money to, to purchase nice things. But the main thing is that if they have love and they're trying to develop that love that God gives to us, they're exactly in God's plan. Unless there's any more questions, um, I think we'll close the time in prayer and uh, we'll go on from there. Okay? 
Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for inventing love and all that we need involving love. Your word gives me a, a foundation to do a, a live a righteous life. Thank you for giving your son, Jesus Christ, to live on earth, to be an example, and to even uh, die on the cross for us so that we might have this eternal life, the greatest gift that we can ever think of. Thank you for the time that we have. Thank you that we can get together uh, hopefully soon and share this group time of a Papa Church body together. Amen. All right. Uh, remember, remind you to do is uh, to try this week, practice loving your parents. And that can be by obeying them. Uh, helping around the house, maybe clean your room. And I like we uh, we also like to you to do is to practice finding that First Corinthians chapter thirteen verses four through six, just so that you be, can become familiar with the Bible and learn, be able to learn and study God's word. Remember to stay cool because you're in the pool. Thank you for this time. And bye-bye from Patches and Mr. Dan. Thank you very much. <laughs>